This AM5 CPU doesn't really make any sense, but nevertheless, it's still a good processor. AMD's Ryzen 5 8600G launched to a, let's say, lukewarm reception. Everyone basically concluded, myself included, that the integrated graphics were actually indeed pretty good, but the CPU side of it was a bit mediocre at best. But today I'm testing how good the CPU side of this processor is and I've compared it to the Ryzen 5 7600 which is one of the best value CPUs right now so let's get into it. So the 8600G is a Zen 4 based APU on the AM5 platform so it's got all the benefits of DDR5 memory, PCIe Gen 4 because there's no Gen 5 on this APU but more on that in a bit and a long socket lifespan. Essentially, the main problem with the 8600G is its CPU portion is kind of cut down by AMD and it's kind of expensive for what it is. If you look at the Ryzen 5 7600, you can pick one of these up for around £190 here in the UK now. And the Ryzen 5 8600G usually goes for around £229 brand new. And for this, you're going to be getting a worse CPU in terms of specs because it's got half of the L3 cache of the Ryzen 5 7600. And it's also got a weird PCIe layer where it's only got an ATEX 4.0 interface for graphics cards, which in all honesty, wouldn't be that much of a problem for most GPUs out there, but it's still cut down nevertheless. In exchange for this, you do get some pretty neat onboard graphics and they do genuinely play games pretty decently at 1080p. You can watch it in a video up there. However, I'm focusing on the raw CPU performance today, so no onboard graphics. To get the most out of the Ryzen 5 8600G, I've tested it paired with the GTX not GTX, the RTX 3080 10 gigabyte Founders Edition at 1080p. For comparison purposes, I've tested against the Ryzen 5 7600 to see how much performance you could be losing with the cut down processor of the 8600G. All testing has been done in my testing system, which has an MSI X670E Tomahawk motherboard, 32 gigabytes of 6000 CL36 memory and a Western Digital SN770 NVMe Gen 4 SSD. The latest Nvidia driver has been used at the time of testing. I can't remember the name, so I'll just put it down there. And lastly, resizable bar has been enabled. So let's see how they stack up. Starting off with a AAA game in Cyberpunk 2077 and on the Ultra preset there's basically no difference between these processors. The Ryzen 5 7600 sees a 3% performance uplift on average with the average frame rate and yeah in real world gameplay you're not going to notice this and the 1 FPS improvement with the 1% lows on the 7600. So Cyberpunk 2077 if you pair it with something like an RTX 3080 you're not going to notice any difference with the average frame rate. And in fact, Spider-Man Remastered sees a performance advantage in favor of the 8600G. It got more average frame rate, but the 1% load did trail yet again by one frame per second. So yeah, if you were running them side by side, you wouldn't notice a difference as this performance is within margin of error and it would not change anything anyway. So. Either of these CPUs are totally fine in Spider-Man Remastered. Where you will notice a difference between both of these processors is in Counter-Strike 2. This heavily CPU dependent shooter sees a 16% performance advantage with the average frame rate with the Ryzen 5 7600. In all fairness, 292 FPS compared to 339 isn't technically make or break, but you are getting more frame rate with the Ryzen 5 7600. So this is the CPU I'd recommend for Counter-Strike 2 and the 1% lows are basically the same so you wouldn't notice a difference there either. Hogwarts Legacy continues the AAA gaming trend of not really changing that much. Albeit though the average frame rate was yeah it was trailing behind on the 8600G but the 1% lows were worse on the 7600 which is kind of surprising to me I wasn't expecting this but then again it's literally a difference of four frames per second so I'm not really sure if you're going to notice this either CPU will be perfectly fine for Hogwarts Legacy with a GPU like the RTX 3080. 
In Fortnite, the 8600G was only good enough for 244 FPS with the DirectX 12 API. If you were to get the 7600, you'd be good enough for 284 FPS on the medium preset with the 3080, so you are getting more performance there. Yet again, as we've seen from previous games, the 1% load doesn't really budge that much. So technically the gameplay isn't going to be smoother with the frame delivery, but on average, you are getting more FPS with the Ryzen 5 7600. So yeah, in Fortnite, I'd recommend the 7600 purely because you're going to be getting better average frame rates. And if you were to put on the performance API, you'd probably notice a bigger performance delta between these processors. The last game I'm taking a specific look at today is Star Wars Jedi Survivor. And this continues the AAA gaming trend of not really that much happens between both these processors. Yes, the 7600 enjoys an average frame rate boost of 5%, but then again, you're not really going to notice 89 FPS compared to 94 frames per second. The 1% lows as well are slightly better in favour of the 8600G for some reason, which is not something I was expecting, but 49 versus 45, I'm not sure if you're going to notice this difference, and even if you were to up this to 1440p, the performance delta between these CPUs is going to close up anyways. So as far as I'm concerned, both the 8600G and Ryzen 5 7600 are perfectly sufficient with an RTX 3080 or RTX 4070 or something along those lines. So then the performance across the games tested today at 1080p is pretty close and it was certainly closer than what I was expecting. The Ryzen 5 8600G has put up a decent fight today and to be honest it's kind of changed my perspective somewhat on what this CPU is actually capable of. The Ryzen 5 7600 only enjoys a 16% lead in average frame rates and to be honest this number was boosted highly by the esports games today so if you were more of an esports gamer I'd probably recommend the 7600 but I'd recommend it to most gamers as well. More on that in a bit though. When looking at the 1% lows though, basically nothing changes because the Ryzen 5 7600 only scored 2% higher across the games tested today in the 1% low department. So games are slightly smoother on the 7600, but if you were running them side by side, you wouldn't notice. And as I said while I was going through the benchmarks, AAA games as basically no performance difference between both of these CPUs. They were all within 5% of each other, which means that's basically within margin of error and you will not notice any difference, at least with an RTX 3080 at 1080p with both of these processors. And I'm gonna continue that point with the RTX 3080 because I could have tested with something like an RTX 4090 if I owned one, they are quite expensive and no one sent one out. So that was off the cards for today. You would probably notice a big difference with a more powerful graphics card like the RTX 4090 or a 7900 XTX. I've even gone on record saying the RTX 3080 pairs very well with the Ryzen 5 7600, particularly at 1440p. And if you were playing at Quad HD, you would see less of a performance delta between both of these processors. So as far as I'm concerned, the 8600G is a very solid CPU, but it still doesn't make that much sense. And the reason why the 8600G doesn't make sense is purely down to pricing. It costs more than the 7600 and objectively it's a worse gaming CPU if you've got a discrete graphics card. This is why I highly recommend the 7600 to the vast majority of gamers over the 8600G because yeah it just doesn't make sense if you're going with a discrete graphics card from the get-go also it's got better features like PCIe 5.0 16x if your motherboard supports PCIe 5.0 but most gamers are going to be fine with 4 so yeah yes the 7600 is going to be lacking the RDNA 3 760M built-in graphics but most gamers aren't going to care for this because they're going to have a nice discrete graphics card instead but my point still stands, the 8600G is still a relatively decent processor, it just doesn't make sense at the price point it's at, and with the cut down PCIe interface and stuff like that, if that makes sense. So from the data I've gathered today, the 8600G isn't a bad processor by any means, it's pricing just isn't that good and it doesn't really make sense to like 99% of the gamers out there. The only case I could make for the 8600G is if you couldn't quite afford your dream graphics card right off of the bat, 
and you had enough to build the rest of the PC. I don't necessarily recommend building a gaming PC in this way, but the iGPU is enough to tide you over in most games at 1080p until you can afford a relatively decent GPU like the RTX 3080 and by extension the 7800 XT from AMD and even the RTX 4070 Super from Nvidia. And because of my findings today, I'm putting the 8600G in my gaming PC with the RTX 3080 because at 1080p it performed just fine and therefore at 1440p it's going to be just as fine because I'm going to be more GPU bound anyways. So the 7600 is going into my testing PC as I'm going to be testing a lot more graphics cards and I want the best CPU for that which is the 7600 and it's got a better PCIe interface so I can test older graphics cards without worrying about any performance losses or anything like that. Speaking of older graphics cards though I am working on a 980 Ti at 4k video so make sure you stay subscribed for that. So if you want to pick up either one of these processors, it will be linked down below in the description. And if you want to see how the integrated graphics on the 8600G get on, you can watch that video there. So with that being said, I'm going to leave this video here. I hope you have a good rest of your day.